Welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys have asked me questions, so why not provide you with some answers? Most questions I get is often about Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose has always been someone who has carried himself to a certain prestigious point of having an astute personality um, and having a much more flourishing career as a sports analyst than an NBA basketball player. A lot of people don't even remember his career as an NBA basketball player. They know him mostly for being an analyst. Now, he's making more, well, he was making more as an analyst than he was an NBA basketball player. As an NBA basketball player, he never earned more than $3 million uh, annually, and he was able to do that um, numerous times, um, you know, due to the fact, fact of his contract that he has with ESPN. Now, ESPN is one that did a crazy layoffs in the past year. We all seen, and one of the most shocking people that were let go was Jalen Rose. Um, Jalen Rose was highly ranked with the organization as far as likability. People liked him. And some things happened. There was a shift within the final two, three months of his um, being there that turned the, the knob or the, what you want to say, it elevated the procedures of adding Jalen Rose to the list where he was going to be protected. Um, there was a lot of factors that came into play. And a lot of these factors are something that the network didn't want to deal with anymore and decided that it would be worth it to cut that big salary. Now, no one knows exactly what Jalen Rose was paid, but it is rumored that he was getting around $3 million in his deal. How many years he had remaining on his contract, that I don't know. But one thing is for sure, Jalen Rose had changed. He went through a revolving door, which put him in a crosshairs of a lot of powerful people. As he changed his, you know, demeanor and decor and started hanging out with Angela Rye, things went awry. He started becoming more Afrocentric and started getting scruffier hair and, you know, his beard was lying wasn't as lined up as he was and he was looking like a hobo in other words then the analyst that they've hired and with the professional shirt and tie and all of these different things here he was always stylish always had the best crispy linings um he was always very well groomed and prepared for his job every day now the fact that he worked mainly out of the California area and when they had to split and have to go back to New York, his marriage with Molly Karam um, suffered dearly as Jalen lost his mother and his grandmother all within like a year. So, those were the two closest people to him. And when that happened, it was a titanic shift as into what was going to happen with him most. Then came to the divorce right after that, to his marriage with Molly Karam, who they both worked together. The strain of them both losing people during the COVID series um, ordeal and the fact that they had to come from their home and travel all the way to where they live now, which was in 
or close to um like well, well bristol connecticut that area but they were in new york so now she's got to commute back and forth as he's still in california that drove a wedge through their marriage that was not going to be recovered and they didn't want anything from each other so they just got a divorce and went their separate ways now they still have to work together at a network where it could be a lot of tension and a lot of stress and does she feel comfortable having Jalen there you know all of these questions and all of these answers or things that are supposed to come full circle wasn't quite coming full circle so now you have another dilemma on your hands and that dilemma is okay what are we really doing here because there's no way this incident should be taking place right now there's no way it doesn't even make sense right so humor me with this for a minute you know the situation is not good yet you still persistently push for actions to be happening or taking place like they want some type of let you say remedy for what's happening between the two but why this decision was coming down where people's jobs weren't safe and a lot of jobs was going to be cut and a lot of people are going to be gone from the network. More problems reared their head. And let's just go down memory lane. MA Udoka situation. After they just made it to the NBA Finals. Right before the start of the new season. This news break. And once this news breaks, they're in the middle of deciding who they're going to cut, who they're going to keep. At this point, from what I was told, Jalen was one of the safe guys. Jalen was safe. And then he questioned M.A. Yudoka's position. And Malika Andrews' position. When he went on the show, on Get Up, or NBA Countdown, whichever one of the shows it was, and Stephen A's point that was being made, and he went against Mike Wilburn, and made his uh, own assessment, which Stephen A didn't think was wise, but he did it. And they made him apologize for it. So let's about, um, what he may did, we know his name. Uh, maybe I'm missing something as it relates to the law, but why we don't know her name? It's not like she's a minor. I feel like we should know her name publicly as well. But with that being said, I respectfully disagree with the legend Michael Wilbon. This is why I feel like he deserves the opportunity to work again. And if he's going to work again, I agree with based you. on that. And if the Nets, who he's familiar with. A few minutes later. I'm Jalen Rose, and I would like to apologize for a comment I made earlier on NBA Countdown. I question why a woman's name who had an alleged affair with Celtics head coach Ime Adoka was not made public. After an internal investigation, and it was discovered that she was a subordinate to the head coach, I now understand fully why her name should not be released to the public. Now, after reading that teleprompter and that written message for him to say on the air, as they can put that in the middle of the basketball game, as the producers came down to talk, Jalen Rose was put in a per very perplexed situation. 
that he had to make that statement. And then after his divorce, things, you know, even though that their divorce, things just wasn't really on the keen side as Angela Rye, who when she first came there, her and Molly was really cool. And she came in and ended up taking her husband. That's not going to look well. This is not going to be a thing that they want to want. This is a huge HR problem waiting to happen. And they don't feel that that's a need that they need to go down that road. Like, we don't need to have these two. Can we put Jalen Rose on first take? I don't think he can come up there with Molly. And even though they're professionals and they can do their job, both said they have no problem with each other. And there shouldn't have been any problem with those two working together. The network felt differently. Did not like employees dating in the workplace, period. Now, that said, that wasn't the big problem. That The M.A. Yudoka situation, that was a problem. Can't have a guy going off script or basically just saying how he feels about the situation when it has been expressly um, passed on throughout the masses of everyone there, how people felt, meaning that we cannot mention this girl's name in such a way, like we can't even speculate on who she is on the air. And we can't start blaming her. That's going to give us a bad relationship with the Boston Celtics, who have a lot of pool in ESPN. Being from Bristol, Connecticut, is very close to Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, a lot of media, a lot of people went to Boston for their media training. A lot of them worked at ESPN. A lot of them don't like anybody disrespecting the Boston Celtics or their organization or any moves that they make, right? Sounds biased, right? But it's the truth. Now, Jalen Rose often spoke about situations in the past that got him in another situation that he didn't want to be in. Jalen Rose was very vocal about the conditions of professional athletes, which sounds very noble, right? It does. unless you're one of those people that do not agree with the direction in which your guy you're paying $3 million a year is going. Let's get into this. And you notice when these scenarios came out for public consumption, like Sean Miller allegedly on a wiretap talking about getting eight and a hundred thousand dollars to attend the school. You notice that the coach wasn't able to coach, but the player was able mm -hmm. to play. How about Miles Bridges? He was mm -hmm. charged basically about doing something illicit, and then all of a sudden he pays forty dollars yeah, to right. a charity. And all of a sudden, he's back eligible. You know what the NCAA is telling us? Y'all not messing with our money. Y'all not You're about right. to get in the way of our NCAA tournament. What's going to happen in a couple of weeks? Everybody's going to be filling out NCAA brackets. Matter of fact, multiple NCAA brackets. Why? Because they want to make money off of those brackets. Everybody gets a chance to eat except the players. And again, for those that say, shut up. You should be happy to have a scholarship. I still pay for my student loans. I hate to break it to you, but this is America. You just weren't talented in basketball. You didn't get recruited <laughs> to play. People aren't making money off of your likeness. People aren't yeah. paying to watch you come and perform. And so yeah. for these players, it's going to eventually happen. I promise you, it's going to happen. And I know it's not going to take place this season. But if the players were to send a message and band together and just say one day we're not going to play, oh, man, you'll see some sweeping changes quick, fast, and in the hurry. The sports now, once he said that, that was before the NIL deals. NCAA 
was very upset that Jalen Rose had that to say. They didn't like it. The University of Michigan, who he's really cool with, and Jawan Howard and everyone else, they were saying, look, we love Jalen Rose, but he needs to back down off this. You know, his, he's going a little too hard. Things are sensitive as it is. We don't need anyone driving a wedge in to NCAA. You know, they were very in, instrumental in the helping Chris Weber and Jalen Rose bond back together. Just the Juwan Howard, the University of Michigan, like, look, bro, let's come together. You know, my bad, your bad. Let's just let's stop this and let's get back to what we need to do. So the power of forgiveness is something else. We all make mistakes. It's what you plan on doing after the mistake is going to tell the tale. Now, All right, that was before Jalen was, you know, then fell off the wagon. I wouldn't say fell off the wagon, but became this Afrocentric Goldie from the Mac looking guy. <laughs> so, but anyway, he once again doubles down and talked about sports being like slavery. Whoo, that's a tough thing to talk. But see, this is after the fact. Jalen Rose has always stated things very clearly. But this new approach from Jalen Rose, this I can say what I want. I'm comfortable. I have my deal. Uh, people know me. That was essential. Then you have the Malika Andrews under the armpit situation, which wasn't him. It was Richard Jefferson, and I pointed it out immediately. And I pointed out the fact that other people didn't see it until my video came out. They actually know the world saw it. Oh, I saw it. Richard Jefferson does that all to her all the time on the show, playfully, and nothing happens to Richard Jefferson. But ESPN Brass, they were sitting up there asking about it because they didn't know. They didn't know that this was going on on the set and they just watching it on social media and saying Jalen Rose and Malika Andrews tries to meet to Jalen Rose. Now Malika Andrews said, there's nothing to report. He did nothing to me. She never threw Jalen Rose under a bus, but she thought she didn't know who did it. She just said, get your finger from under my arm. The general public thought she never accused Jalen Rose of anything. She never accused Richard. Like she knew who it was, but she never made a statement to stop the slander that was going on with Jalen Rose and Jalen's this and everybody's riding for Jalen Rose. And he don't even want his name in this controversy because a lot of people are getting cut at this time. So they told him, just don't say anything and it'll go away. But Jalen can't stay quiet. So he comes out and says, this had nothing to do with me. I didn't do this. And you, we've all seen that, right? Went against ESPN Brass again. Jalen was gone. <laughs> they can't control the man. He's not going to listen because he wants to speak his mind. So he was going to get cut now. And they made it all about salary. No, they brought some people back that they were going to let go and decided to give them a deal and let Jalen go. that are predominantly black are the ones that once you get into them, the goal is for you to feed the system and help the system make as much money as possible before you profit. Woo, and this is a fair use act. Uh, fair use, fair use, fair use. This is not a rebroadcast of the events. We're only giving commentary off the events that's already took place. You can go watch them and their places where they were created. I'm here to just comment on, give my reaction to the thoughts. Let's go. Basketball and football, predominantly black sports, 
are the main ones with restrictions after high school. Mm -hmm. For a while, it had dress code, had salary cap, couldn't smoke weed, um, had a length of contracts. Like in baseball, you can sign a 10-year deal. In hockey, you can sign a nine-year deal. Can't in basketball. In tennis, in, in golf, in NASCAR, you can turn pro after high school. Can in basketball and football, they're going to force us. And this is this is this is a residue of slavery. This, this that's what it is. They're going to force you to feed and pay the system as long as possible. When you graduate from high school, there's so many players that shown you can go to the league and be successful. Kobe, KG, J.O., um, Daryl Dawkins. Spencer Haywood, the originator, LeBron James, LeBron James. <laughs> yeah. so so T Mac. So there's evidence, and what Jalen's saying, and what he was saying was absolutely true. But they don't want to hear it from a guy who's dressing Afrocentric and running around here with Angela Rye. Now. Is this hurting Jalen Rose getting work anywhere else? Well, he wasn't going to get offered for the undisputed job when that was up there. We knew that wasn't going to happen with him and Skip. Um, Jalen Rose, from what I've been told, is sitting out and weighing his options. He's worried about his uh, leadership foundation, the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy that he created in 2011, it's in Detroit. Like, he's basically working on that. Well, the thing about it with Jalen is he sees things from a, a point of view that most people are not looking through. He's looking through a whole different lens. And when we're looking through different lenses, we have ourselves to blame or hold accountable for different things, you know? So nobody here is in deep tears of crying, you know, over the situation. All we're doing is stating facts and saying this should happen or this shouldn't happen. But one thing's for certain, Jalen Rose, will have another job, whichever what he wants to do. If he wants to create something on a podcast or join a show, that's all on him. Um, NBC Sports and Amazon Prime. I believe had uh, reached out to Jalen Rose or Jalen Rose had some conversation mainly with NBC sports. Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose has a name. So when you have a name where people recognize who you are and it's not really from basketball, it's from what you do behind that desk, that's an intangible feat that is worth a lot of money. They can't re just replace you. They can't just ostracize you and say, hey, this guy is a nobody or this guy has to go. This guy is a... Uh, Somebody that might be a problem. We can't deal with him. How are we going to control Jalen Rose? No. Jalen is somebody who was put on this planet to give people the truth. His weakness is always the wrong woman. <laughs> he seemed to always go for the same type of woman. And that's probably one of his downfalls. But, yeah, he loved his job. 
He was good at his job, very knowledgeable about the sport and how to explain it to the layman and be accepted by those who watched the game where he wasn't really offensive. He just gave you the details as best as he could. Now, Uh, no, I read what you guys have read. About him teaming up with Stephen A. Smith and joining him on the Stephen A. Smith show. Uh, I didn't, I look at that as some fan rhetoric crap. I didn't take that seriously. I didn't believe it. And I still don't believe it. So that's just how it is. Um, predominantly, I would like to see people flourish you know that's just me i like to see people you know get to that next level that they want to get to without having to be restricted that means a lot to me so in my mind it makes it better or easier for me to have that as the scenario as opposed to anything else You know, so yeah, that's where we stand. So shouts out to everybody that support my page, uh, Carcino for Life. Don't forget our Patreon is Carcino for Life. We got the killing of Michael Jackson part six is finally released, and you guys have it. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> yes, that is out for the VIP members. Definitely check out um, the Magic Johnson video. That's probably going to go live very soon here because that was an early release for everybody there. Uh, my, my cash app is Carcino, as you see. The super chat. Thanks, everybody who super chatted me. Uh, all the birthday love you gave. Appreciated that. You know, most of it's crazy. People I don't even know remember my birthday. Oh, yeah. And there was a guy I saw right next to me. When I was coming down, I believe 60, I think I was on 60. And I looked over and then I was driving and the guy saw me and was like, Corsino! He had like two white chicks in the back. I don't know if he was doing Uber or what. <laughs> but hey, shouts out to you, bro. Appreciate you. And that isn't my car, that's a, that's a rental. <laughs> I don't drive a Nissan Sentra, but. Yeah, that's a rebel. <laughs> uh, and that note, I am out. God bless. But the Nissan Sentra, though, let me tell you that. It's more kitted up than my Mercedes. I'm going to tell you that now. That car got more things on it than I'm like, man, because you know how you get a car, you don't get another one. Like that Mercedes is in the 2000, what is it, 16, 15? So... This car is like a 2023, 20, 2022. This thing tells you other cars is coming. Bing, bing. You're like, whoa, bing. things lighting up. I'm like, damn, you got a big gigantic screen in front. I'm like, damn, they go all out. <laughs> so definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Yeah, they get an A-plus for that, straight like that. So I'm going to get up out of here. I want to say blessings again to y'all, and we're going to have probably four videos in the corner for y'all to check out. Everybody who got off early when I started giving out shouts out to, like, Kwame Brown Bus Live, you know, Ticket TV, Dreamers Pro, uh, 
Jose Jack Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Welcome to HDII TV. And without a doubt, we got Amondo Black TV, the Angela Stanton King Show, so many others. Okay. Can't think of them all right now. Uh, Damn D, shout out to Damn D. And that's about it. We rolling. 